three go. Shout out to Braden and somebody else. Glaze. And Riley, who's sleeping right now. Okay, very good. All right. A ball is thrown upward in the air with initial velocity of 18 meters per second. The height of the ball is modeled by this equation. H of t is equal to 18t minus 4.9t squared. You may not understand problems of motion. Good for you. I'm very proud of you. Tomorrow we'll try to do a checkpoint on it. Maybe. Um, but now let's do other application. What is the maximum height the ball reached? Oh, boy. Let's think about this. I toss something up into the air, and it comes down. Tell me something about the velocity on the way up. Tell me something about the velocity on the way down. Tell me something about the velocity when it reaches its maximum height. Oh, so you told me in order to reach the maximum height and determine when that is, I find when the velocity is equal to zero. Or take the derivative, which is 18 minus 9.8t, and set that equal to zero. How do I solve that? 18 equals 9.8t divided by 9.8. Somebody with your handy dandy calculator. Awesome. Any questions how we calculated that? Again. An object is thrown into the air, it comes back down. When does it reach its maximum height? When the velocity is equal to zero. Oh, can I explode your brain real quick? Watch this. What shape did that make? A parabola, ax squared, whoop, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Anybody remember the formula that we used to find the location of the vertex? Negative b divided by 2a. Isn't that where the derivative is equal to 0? Watch me go. What's the derivative of ax squared? 2ax. What's the derivative of bx? b. What's the derivative of c? Set it equal to 0. Subtract the b. 2ax is equal to negative b divided by 2a. And we get x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. Pretty cool. Yeah. Calculus is amazing, folks. It is amazing. Okay. All right. Let's roll with that. What is the height of the ball after two seconds? What? Oh, I want to know the maximum height of the ball. I found out the time. Question. D. Weiland. Because I took the derivative. Derivative of 18t is 18. Derivative of 4.9t squared is 9.8t. We good? All right. So, uh, the question was not at what time does it reach the maximum height. The question is, what is the maximum height? Well, that's the time. How would I find the height? Plug it in where? This equation? Okay, so i got to plug it back in here. Because you're wondering the height. This tells the height. This tells the velocity. And we already know what would happen if we plugged it back in the velocity. What is the velocity at 1.83 seconds? It's zero. Plug 1.83 back into the original height function, and you get 16.53 feet. Meters. Unless you already watched videos, so. All right. Letter B, what is the height of the ball after two seconds? Where do I plug the two in? Yeah, in the original one up here, right? So H of 2 is equal to 36 minus 4.9 times 4. Whatever that is. You tell me something right away, okay? If it reaches its maximum height at 1.83 seconds, then tell me something about the velocity at two seconds. It's going to be negative, right? Because it's on its way down. So we better get a negative value. 
Some 36 minus 4.9 times 4. Eighteen times two. Sixteen point four meters. Okay, so that's the height after two seconds. We said that the velocity would be negative. Where do we plug the two into now? In the velocity function, yeah, V of two is equal to eighteen minus nine point eight times two. So 18 minus 19.6, negative 1.6 meters per second. Whoop. And we said that that makes sense because we know it's on its way down at that time. We know it's on its way down at that time. Um, yeah, no. Okay. At what time does the ball have a height of 20? It never does. Why? Because the maximum height is 16. Suppose I change a question. I say, when does it have a height of 10? Ten equals eighteen t minus four point nine t squared. How would you solve that? You put it all on one side. You have four point nine t squared minus eighteen t plus ten is equal to zero. Now what? Anybody got the handy dandy quadratic formula on their calculator? Plug in 4.9, negative 18, and 10. 2.99 and 0.68. So there's two different times at which it has a height of 10. 2.99 seconds and 0.68 seconds. And that would make sense because at we said that at uh, 1.83 seconds, that's when it reaches its maximum height. So um, 1.83 is between those two. Suppose I want to know the velocity, not, not at what time, but what is the velocity when it has a height of 10. What would you then do? Plug these into the velocity function. Okay. So it's a good example to try to have you understand when to use the height function, when to use the velocity function, and things that could be generated from that velocity piece. Okay. I said, suppose we change the question. We said, what is the velocity when it has a height of 10? So first you would find when it has a height of 10, which are these. And then if you want to know the velocity, you would take these and plug them into the velocity function. We all good? Okay. Flip it over. We'll end with this for today, which is our economics application. Let's make something. Kaylee, what do you want to make? What do you want to make? You're going to go into business. What do you want to produce? Shoes, hats, scarves, dresses. Okay, awesome. Kaylee wants to make, she wants to produce dresses, okay? All right. Suppose Kaylee decides to put together a, a dress, all right? My guess is that, have you ever made a dress before? Okay, would you agree that it might take you a while to make your first dress? Okay, after you make the first one, what's going to happen to your efficiency as you make more and more of them? Yeah, it's going to go up. Your efficiency gets better as you make more of them. Why? You get better at it, right? Yeah, you get better at it. So maybe, like if you include her time and her resources and everything, maybe it costs her like $400 to make her first dress. Okay, now be careful and listen to what I say. This is, this is the important part you got to lean into. What is going to cost more? 
to produce one dress or to produce 10 dresses? 10 dresses. It's going to cost more to make 10 than it is going to make one, right? What's going to cost more, to make one dress or to make the tenth dress? The first dress, right? Because she's less efficient. She might require $400 to make the first dress, $300 to make the second, $200 to make the third, $150 for the fourth. And, and when she gets to her, her tenth dress, maybe she'll be down to like 80 bucks. Still costs a lot of money to make those ten. But the 10th dress is cheaper than it is to make the first dress. We all understand that? Okay. So the cost function, C of X, is the cost of producing X items. The marginal cost function is C prime of X. It tells us the cost of producing the next item. Kaylee's dresses. Is that the name of your shop, Kaylee? Huh? We got cost. We got dresses. Okay. So here's the deal. At the beginning, her cost is always going up because it costs more to continue to produce dresses, right? But this is what we're finding out. That that cost of producing the first dress it was really expensive. But the cost of producing the fifth dress, well, that's not quite as bad. The cost of producing the tenth dress, hey, that's getting pretty good. The marginal cost function is the derivative. It tells us the cost of producing that next item. So again, suppose the first one cost her $500, and the second one cost her $400. The next one was $300 and then 200, and then 150, and then 120, okay? Um, you might make a guess. You might say, well, I'm guessing that the next dress might cost her around 110 bucks. Well, the marginal cost function will tell us that. It doesn't mean that it costs $110 to produce all the dresses. All the dresses would be 500, 400, 300, 200, 150, 120, and 110. So let's, uh, let's go to a problem, okay? It says, ooh, you don't want to do that. That's tomorrow. Uh, a company produces X number of shoes. The cost can be estimated by the following function. C of X equals 10,000 plus 5X plus 0 0.01 X squared. What is the marginal cost function? The marginal cost function is simply C prime of X. This is super easy. What's C prime of X? 5 plus 0 0.01 2 X. Piece of cake, upside down. Right? Okay. It says, what is C prime of 500 and interpret what C prime of 500 means. How would I figure out C prime of 500? I plug it in. C prime of 500 is equal to 5 plus 0 0.02 times 500. This is two one hundredths, two one hundredths times five hundred ten. So we have five plus ten is fifteen dollars. What the heck does that mean? Alex, you tailed off there towards the end. Say it like you mean it and then own it.
Yes, I, I do expect you to write in complete sentences. We are in high school, so we're going to do that. The cost of producing the, the next item. What's the next item? The 500 first. Pair of shoes. Yep, the next item is approximately is approximately fifteen dollars. The next item. No, C prime of uh, five hundred is exactly fifteen. But we have to interpret it what it means, okay? And what it means is the cost of producing the 500 first item is approximately 15. I'm going to show you how much it costs exactly to produce the 500 first pair of shoes. Now, why is it approximate? Here's why. We're going from 500 to 501, right? So we produce an integer number pair of shoes, don't we? Okay. Suppose there was a 500.01 pair of shoes. Okay. Um, the question is like, what's the next one? Like, if I ask you what's the next pair of shoes after 500, you would say 501. But if I ask you what's the next number after 500, you'd be like, well, that's a really good question. What is the next number after 500? 500 plus 1 over infinity? That might be a way to think about it, but that's kind of tough, right? So the next number in math is different than the next number when you're producing items. That's why it's approximate. So let's figure out how much it costs to produce. Okay? Let's go back to Kaylee's example. Suppose it costs Kaylee $10,000 to produce a hundred dresses. Suppose it costs her $10,050 to produce 101 dresses. How much would it have cost her to produce that last dress? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the numbers again. To produce 1,000 dresses, or 100 dresses, uh, it costs Kaylee um, $10,000. To produce 101 dresses, it cost her $10,050. So how much did it actually cost her to produce the 101st dress? It cost her 50 bucks. Okay. So we know the estimation for the pair of shoes. The estimation is 15 Let's figure out what the actual cost is. We're going to figure out the cost of producing 100 or 501, excuse me. Cost of producing 501, and we're going to figure out the cost of producing 500, and we'll compare those. I'm going to get out my handy dandy calculator because it's super handy. Love my TI 83. Bought my daughter TI-84. Now she's getting kind of snobby about it. She thinks that her calculator is better than mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at you go. Actually, that's what I bought her. I bought her the 84 Plus. Is it the Silver Edition? Oh, all right. <laughs> you got Silver Edition? You got the Gold? Yeah, whatever. There's no gold edition. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go y equals, and I there's a number of ways to do this, but I'm going to choose to enter the function into my calculator. Uh, what do we got? Uh, let's see here. What's our function? 10,000? There we are. 10,000 plus 5x plus 0.01x squared. We all good? We're going to go to my table. The tables are awesome. I type in 501 
and I get and and just to be clear folks if you if you actually highlight it you can see the entire number listed below so we got 15,015.01 what do I do now type in 500 and I get 15,000 on the dot. So it says that we estimate the cost of producing the next item to be 15 bucks. What is the actual cost? The actual cost is $15.01. They are pretty close though, aren't they? And that's why it's an estimation because we produce an integer number of items as opposed to a fractional number. Not too bad, huh? Okay. Sure, that's fine. You could say they are super duper close. Yep. Sure, that'll be fine as well. All right, Braden and Zach. Later.